Welcome to the channel. Today's video, I'm going to be going through setting up PFSense virtual machine in a VMware workstation environment. I'm going to have three interfaces. One is NAT, one is internal, and the other is going to be host only. It's actually quite easy. And in this video, I'm going to make an assumption that you have VMware workstation installed already. And I'm going to make an assumption that you also have the ISO file downloaded from PFSense main website. In the description of the video, I'll include a download for the PFSense ISO. Now, PFSense is a tool that I use a ton and I love it. It's, it's a great tool for learning uh, routing and networking and firewall rules and intrusion detection. And there's just so many packages that we can add into PFSense itself that make it an awesome learning environment. And it plays really, really well into our home lab type of environment. Right away here, I'm going to be going through and stepping through all of my steps that I do when I install a PFSense clean for the very first time. You will notice that I will actually edit the video to skip past some of the long waiting, and that's okay. Just know that if I skip ahead, that's because there was a bit of a, a waiting process. I'll give some explanations for some of the reasons why I'm choosing some of my options here, and there you go. That's going to be the video. First things first, we have our VMware workstation open, and we are going to go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I always go with custom. I don't choose typical because I like to manipulate some of the settings that are behind the scenes to better suit my needs in whatever home lab environment that I'm working on. Let's go next. These are fine. And some people will choose the ISO file at this point. I personally like to go and set up all of the network settings, like how many adapters am I going to be using and things like that, and then go do the ISO file. If you want to do the ISO file now, that's your choice. Uh, and right now I'm going to choose install that later. Linux is the, the distro that I you need to use. And for PFSense, I typically choose Debian 64 bit, something along those lines. It's going to work better. I've never had any challenges using this for PFSense. I'm gonna give it a name and choose whatever destination you want to save this to. In this case, I'm just gonna save it here, not a big deal. Processors of two, that's fine. You can, you can amp this up if you so choose. But for my home lab environment, I don't need to have a hardcore PFSense. It's, it's fine with the defaults in this particular situation. Default for VMware here, it's going to go to 2048 megabytes. That's two gigs. PFSense doesn't need that much RAM for your, for your needs. But also again, again, it depends on what you are trying to build. I'm okay with just a single gig for this particular machine. You could go down to uh, half a gig, so 512 megabytes. That would also meet your needs as well. But again, if you're going to be having a lot of uh, traffic going across this firewall, you're, you're going to want to consider amping up the memory of that particular machine. So in this case, one gig is fine. Next, we're going to use NAT. And for the next few clicks here, we're actually going to use the defaults. So I'm going to go NAT. Yes. 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 And we're going to create a new virtual disk. So it's a brand new, brand new machine. We're not bringing anything else in. And Keep it as 20 if you want. I mean, you could go bigger, you could go a little bit smaller. That's just sort of default. But the thing you're going to change here is save it as a single file. This is a preference thing. So I like to have my, my virtual machines in a single disk file and not distributed across multiple. It allows for easier distribution to others if I so choose. Um, and it also lowers the probability of something happening to one of those single files. And that would be, it's frustrating. I've had it happen. So I avoid that problem with making a single file here. So I like that. Go with next. That's fine with me. And we're going to go finish. Our machine, the shell of it is ready. It's not ready to power on at this point. We have to go into this machine and do some more settings. So let's go ahead and do that. Now, remember, we're going to set up three adapters. And currently, we only have one. So we're going to go and hit add. And we're adding a network adapter. Finish. 
Good. Remember, we want three. We only have two right now. We're going to add a third one. Network adapter. Beautiful. Now, a special thing that is unique to PFSense is that when we when we power that machine on and it looks at how many adapters that we have, we have to order them in a logical way. And so PFSense will always do it in this order. We have WAN is first. This is normal. And then LAN is second. And then the third one is always going to be OPT1. And if you're going to have a fourth, it'd be OPT2. So when I develop my, my settings here, I, I put my adapters in there so that they also logically match whatever PFSense does. So NAT is our WAN in PFSense. So that's, that's first. We're going to leave that the same. For adapter 2, that's going to be our LAN. And remember, I want my LAN to be over here, which in this case is actually going to be an internal network. So let's add a LAN segment to that. In this case, I'm going to use LAN 1. It's a pre-made one. If I wanted to make a new one, I'll just go to LAN segments and then add it. And have it, have it be something else. Okay. Then I have the option of of these. I'm okay with just LAN 1. That's great. And then we're going to go to our third one, which is going to be a host only network. And so I have a host only network available to me. We're going to choose VMNet 1. Beautiful. And that the networking piece is, is ready for us to install, but we haven't put our ISO file in there. So let's go over to our CD here. And at this point, this is where I would insert the ISO image file. So we're going to go click that and then I'm going to hit browse and I'm going to navigate to wherever I've saved that ISO file. And then you would do the exact same thing. So wherever you saved your PFSense ISO file, now is where you would, now is where you would do that thing. And we're ready to hit OK. Now this machine is ready to power on. And with that, let's go ahead and power the machine on and step through some of the configurations for this machine. We're gonna step through and we're gonna hit accept. And I want to install PFSense. I mean, it's right there on the screen. Hit okay. Now at this point, you can choose what kind of file system you want. You can go auto ZFS or UFS. It depends on you, but for this particular video, I'm gonna be choosing auto UFS and I'm gonna be using the entire disk. So we're gonna to get to choose, what do I want? Do I wanna use, I'm gonna break this thing up or am I gonna use the entire disc? And I actually want to use the entire disc. Now this is a choice that I make because I, in my lab environment, I use snapshots. So if something breaks on my machine, I can just revert back to a snapshot. And so that's my own redundancy in my process, but you have to make a choice for yourself on that one. And when you use MBR, that is completely fine. It's a little older, but that's okay. I actually like all of these settings. They are fine with me because I'm using the entire disk, so we're gonna hit finish. And I'm gonna commit these changes to the disk. Okay, so now we have a choice if we're going to reboot, and I am going to reboot. And it's going to go to the main PFSense terminal. Now there's a process that I, I build into my own PFSense usage. I encourage you to do this as well. It's gonna save yourself a little bit of headache. We're gonna wait for this to boot up and then we're gonna actually turn our PFSense machine off completely and we're going to remove the ISO file. Great, it looks good. So now we are actually going to turn this machine completely off and we go over to the shutdown guest and we're gonna shut it down and head on over to the virtual machine settings here and go over to where we had our ISO file. And now we're gonna be using the use physical drive. This is an important process because when we boot this machine up again, it's going to look for the, the disk where your operating system is installed and it's not gonna look for the ISO file. So this is, this is an important step. We're gonna hit okay there. And then we're gonna power this machine on again and our next step is we're going to configure some IP addresses. Let's go in and set our interfaces. Currently, we can only see two, but remember we had set up three. By default, PFSense is only going to see two, WAN and LAN, 
but we want that third one. So we need to tell PFSense that there's actually a third one plugged into it. So let's go ahead and set up that third interface. And we're going to do the IP addresses for both of these interfaces. So we're going to start off with assigning interface. So I'm going to hit the number one and go enter. And we can see on the screen that we've got three. Perfect. But one is down. So we are going to go and turn that one to up. And so are we going to set up VLANs today? No, we are not. And we're going to step through and set up the interfaces. We're going to tell it where does WAN and LAN and OPT1 belong. And we have to go in order. So it's going to start with WAN. So EM0 is our first one. LAN is going to be EM1. And our OPT1 is going to be the last one, which is EM2. And I like it. And we're going to hit yes and proceed. There you go. So now we've got all of those interfaces in the up state, but currently opt one does not have an IP address and that's okay. Because remember that one is attached to a host only network. What I want to do in our configuration here is I want to change the, the LAN here to not be the default of a 1.0 slash 24 network. I'm actually going to make it to something else and we're going to be creating a DHCP pool. So let's go in and do that. We're going to hit the number two and enter and which interface are we playing with well we are playing with the LAN so we're going to hit two again and are we configuring this via DHCP now this is an important spot to really ponder on because if I'm configuring this via DHCP that means that the IP address is going to be obtained from somewhere else and I don't want that I want it set statically and I want this interface to be actually distributing IP addresses itself. So we are going to hit no for this. I'm going to set the IP address. I'm going to set it to five. I mean, that's just the one I chose for the video. It's going to be a CIDR of 24, meaning that the first three octets are the network space, this, this, and this. And then this last octet is going to be the host space. So we do 24 for that. And really you can do whatever you want. It depends, it depends on what you are trying to accomplish. But we like that. We are not going to be setting an upstream gateway. This is just a, a run of the mill average PFSense setup. We're going to set up DHCP for uh, DHCP six. We are not going to be doing that. We are not going to be setting the DHCP. Uh, we are not going to be setting up the IPv6 address. So just skip past that with an enter. Do you want to enable DHCP? So now, yes, we do, because I want machines that are connected to this interface to be given an IP address as long as they're asking for it. So yes, we do. Now enter the range. So now this is where we're actually doing the pool. When we're dealing with a slash 24, that means we've got about 253 host spaces that we could use in this particular network. Now I'm gonna do uh, one like this. Now I like to start at the 10 number. That means I've got really, uh, because I'm using one for the gateway, I've got two to uh, nine for static. So that we leave that there. And now what well, the upper range of my pool is going to be 192.168.5.254. So that means everybody that's within 10 to 254 is going to be able to that's the range or that's the, the device IP addresses that can be handed out. Two through nine cannot be handed out. So I always leave a little bit of room for static. And when it asks for a web configurator, you say yes. And now it's gonna go through a little bit of this, this process for us. I say enter, and bing, bang, boom. We have set our LAN interface. So in this next part, things are a little bit different. That LAN is going to be handing out IP addresses to whichever device connects to that LAN via its internal network, that LAN one that I made earlier in the video. In this case, we have the PFSense. I don't want it to give out IP addresses. In fact, I want it to be that interface to be a part of a different network entirely 
that's actually managed via VMware Workstation itself. Before we go in and configure that PFSense, we need to actually make sure that our VMware Workstation has the network that we like. Now remember, I, I chose VMware Net, VMNet 1. Let's go to Edit, and we go to Virtual Network Editor. It's gonna take a, a moment for it to load up here. Bring it on over. And I want, you could do change settings. It's fine. You have to be an administrator to do that, which makes sense. I like to be able to see all of the things, even if I'm not going to mess around with that one. I do actually like to see all that's available. So remember, VMNet1 is the the network host only that I used. We have DHCP here, potentially. So I'm actually not going to use DHCP. But I do want my opt1 here to be attached to that network. Currently inside of the VM settings, it is. However, it's not going to be obtaining an IP address dynamically. We have to set that statically. So let's go in and do that. But we also want to make note of the network that we're using. So 192.168.190.0, that's the network. And then we can see that our subnet mask also, also confirms that. Let's go ahead and hit OK. We're going to remember that the third octet is a 190. Let's zoom on into our opt one and we're going to go ahead and set that static. So we're playing with our third one here. So we're going to do set IP interest, set IP address. Yep. Two. We're working on the third one. So we hit three. Are we going to configure this via DHCP? So is it going to be getting an IP address from somewhere else? No, it is not actually. So no. What is the IP address? So 192.168. Remember 190, and we'll give it we'll give it an address of let's do a dot ten. That's fine. In this particular case, in this lab environment, that's okay. It meets my needs. So hit enter. What's the subnet mask? We're dealing with the 24 here, just similar to similar to our other one, just a simple class C here. Hit enter. We are not doing upstream gateway. So hit enter. We are not going to be configuring DHCP 6. So no to that. We don't want to set up IPv6 right now. So enter. Do we want to enable DHCP on this network? No, we do not because remember, this is this IP address is actually part of a different network, the host only network, which is not being managed by PFSense. So no to that. Hit enter. And we can see on the screen that we've got our PFSense actually set up. Now we've got our NAT, which is connecting, it's going to allow us to get to the internet. We've got our LAN, which is our internal network. And we've got our host only, which is attached to opt one. All we need to do now is attach another machine to that interface. And if it's on, on LAN, it's going to be given an IP address via DHCP. This is great. VMware Workstation is a really good tool for your home home lab type of environment. You can easily see things up on the in the tabs up here. Um, there's a lot of network configurations that can be done inside of VMware. It's it's a great it's a great tool. Whether you like VirtualBox or you like VMware more. Both of these solutions are, are good to know and help you in your home lab environment. You know what? I'm glad you watched the video. Thanks, thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you later. Bye.